Hello, Christ is in our midst. I'm Father Kevin Long of St. Elias, St. York Orthodox Church in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Today's Saturday, October 19th, 2024, and here are the readings for today. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verses 14 through 21. In those days, Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these men are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Yea, and on my men servants and my maid servants in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heaven above, and signs on the earth beneath, blood, and fire, and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before the day of the Lord comes, the great and manifest day. And it shall be, that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke chapter 7 verses 1 through 10. Let us be attentive. At that time Jesus entered Capernaum. Now a centurion had a slave who was dear to him, who was sick and at the point of death. When he heard of Jesus, he sent him elders of the Jews asking him to come and heal his slave. And when they had come to Jesus, they besought him earnestly, saying, He is worthy to have you do this for him, for he loves our nation, and he has built us our synagogue. And Jesus went with them. When he was not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to him, saying to him, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy to have you come under my roof. Therefore I do not presume to come to you. But say the word, and let my servant be healed. For I am a man set under authority, with soldiers under me. And I say to one, Go, and he goes, and to another, Come, and he comes. And to my slave, Do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he marveled at them, and turned and said to the multitude that followed him, I tell you, not even in Israel have I found such faith. And when those who had been sent returned to the house, they found the slave well. Glory to thee, our God. Glory to thee. So today we have a telling of a centurion who has a sick servant. Someone that was very dear to him and he is sick to the point of death. And so he then asks that Jesus come and heal the slave. So they come, and they do honestly beseech him, pointing out that this is a good man, a good centurion. He loves the nation, and he's good for them, and that he built their synagogue. And so when Jesus comes, the centurion really doesn't actually see Jesus as needing to come to his house. He just believes that since he, the centurion, as a man under authority and also commands those who are under him to obey, he knows. When he says go, his servants go. When he says come, they come. And so Jesus understands that the centurion's faith is so great that he believes that all Jesus needs to do is just say the word and his servant will be healed. And so he says this, and Jesus agrees that indeed this servant will be healed. And Jesus marvels, and he says, I tell you, not even in Israel have I found such faith. Brothers and sisters, in this day and age, we also should be children of obedience. There is great freedom in obedience. It doesn't seem like it at the time. But when we think about the things that we are supposed to do as Christians, we know that there is life in our choosing to do those things. And so it takes away some of our free will if we voluntarily constrain that will 
to choose to follow after the teachings of Christ and the things that build up us and him and life and do away with the things that do not. There are countless stories of obedience that are found in the lives of the monastics. Even there, they are subject to authority. They listen to the commands of the abbot or the abbess and they go and they do what is supposed to happen free of trying to question what's being done now there are limits obviously in obedience you do not do something that is personally harmful to yourself you also don't do something that is questionable in faith but there are many times when obedience is the better way and the centurion understands this and knows that since our Lord is so powerful and a master of all things, then the spirits themselves that besiege to this poor slave, when they hear the command of Jesus' voice, of course, they will flee. The centurion has great faith. We, in turn, need to echo that faith in our lives to believe that our Lord is indeed our Lord and will deliver us, no matter where we may be, as long as he becomes our chief focus and object in our lives to serve him and nothing else. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the section below. In the meantime, I pray that God will bless you and everyone you love. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. I thank you very much for joining me. You have a great day, and God willing, we'll see you tomorrow.